Hello, happy, happy Tuesday. This is Wendy Lee. I'm a creative, uh, uh, I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator and I'm coming at you from my Creatively Your Studio here in Pufftown, North Carolina. It's about uh, 12.30 and uh, some change today on this fun Tuesday morning and I hope that you are excited and ready to do a little bit of paper crafting with me today. So I have a um, lovely card that we're going to create. This is a little collage card. So I'm going to talk to you about creating a simple collage card. Hey Terry, so glad you could join me today. Hey Ginger, glad you guys are jumping on. So I am featuring the Gorgeous Posies stamp set. This stamp set um, is sold uh, separately but is a coordinating product to the Gorgeous Posies kit, project kit. I'm gonna go ahead and show you these in case you've not seen these cards. So this is a obviously an awesome box. And then you open it up, so pretty on the inside, and it's got all of your supplies to make your projects. I'm gonna go ahead and pull out the cards um, that the kit makes. So it makes these four designs, and I believe there's four of each, so you get 16 cards if my math is correct today. Um, so these are just beautiful. I love all the gold foil. Um, it just adds a little special touch to that. And I do have a special going on through the end of July. So just a few more days. Friday will be the last day. When you use my current host code here, G-E-J-D-M-M-F-4, and you purchase both the Gorgeous Posy stamp set as well as the project kit, you are going to get a bonus tutorial and the make and take packets to make these four cards. So there's one. I gave a sneak peek on that a few weeks ago. There's this one, this one, and this one. So you will get those packets in the mail from me along with the tutorial when you purchase both the stamp set and kit. So today we're going to jump in and we are going to create another project using this wonderful stamp set. So I hope that you guys love this. Hey, Lane, how, so glad to see you. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. See if I can find all my things. Hopefully I didn't forget anything today. So I'm gonna move this out of our way and um, grab my card base. So I am working with Sahara Sand cardstock and this is a five and a half by eight and a half piece of cardstock. I will add all the measurements and supply list at the end of the video. Um, I'll go back and update the description so that you guys have everything you need. So don't stress out about that right now. All right, so that is my, my card base. Next, I'm gonna take a five and a quarter by four inch piece of Sahara sand, and I am going to bring in this new, I love this folder. It's the Dainty Diamonds 3D Embossing Folder. So I'm just gonna slide that right in there and run this under um, through my die cutting machine and embossing machine and come out with a piece that looks like this. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and adhere this to our card front with our dimensional dots. I love our 3D embossing folders. They have such great depth to that texture and it just adds a really nice touch to your card. So, all right, we've got some dimensionals on there. Let's go ahead and get this on our card front. Perfect, love it already. Okay, next we are going to take a piece of Whisper White and you know what, I pulled the dies and I don't have them on the table. Let me grab those, sorry about that. I did not mean to hide them uh, from what we were doing today. And of course I put them away, put them away. That was not the smartest thing I could have done to prepare for this, but let me pull them back out. All right, we are using the Stitch So Sweetly dies and so I used the largest scallop rectangle first. So we're going to go ahead and take this and run that through our die cutting machine and get our rectangle. All right, so that gives me this piece here. Okay, so I want to go ahead and start off by stamping my leaves on this layer. So let me move some things out of the way. I'm going to grab a scrap of paper here, if I can reach it. All right. And then I'm gonna bring in my soft seafoam ink pad. And I'm going to do this leaf image here. 
and I'm just gonna stamp this right up at the top. And then I'm gonna go ahead and stamp a second one towards the bottom here. I think it just adds a nice subtle touch having that little hint of color in those leaves in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and add the veins also to the leaves real quick. Same color, tone on tone. This stamp set is a distinctive stamp set. So you get lots of depth to your color. Uh, it's kind of fun that way. All right, so I've got my leaves all set up. Get rid of my scrap paper there. So that is beautiful already, yay. All right, so then I've got another piece of Whisper White cardstock. And on this piece, I'm gonna go ahead and stamp two of the flower images in Flirty Flamingo. So we'll go ahead and stamp this on. Hey, Dana, so glad you're joining me today. All right, there's one. And let's see, there's two right there. Perfect. Something tells me that I might have messed that up, but we'll find out as we go here, right? All right, next I want to add the little dots to the center of the flowers with my Mary Merlot ink pad here. Perfect. Just adds a nice little finishing touch to each of those flowers, don't you think? All right, so now we're gonna fussy cut that out. So that means I'm taking my, my old fashioned scissors no fancy machine, and I am just going to cut around this image to get me my flowers. Now, I could have stamped these flat, and it would have been very pretty as well, but I think that the extra height um, is really nice. So when I fussy cut, I like to use deep down into my scissors instead of using the point. So if you use down in here, I find I get a better cut. I also find if I move my paper instead of my scissors, um, I get a little bit of a cleaner image. So you have to figure out what works best for you. And you can see I like to cut into the point instead of pivoting at the point if I can. Now I won't say I always do it that way. I try to, but sometimes I just don't. So this isn't too bad to cut out. This is a pretty forgiving flower. And again, you can leave as much white edge as you want. You can cut all the white edge off if you want to. See there, I moved my scissors instead of my paper. So, you know, kind of a combo, I guess. And one more. Now, I'm not gonna make you watch me cut out the second. I do need two flowers, but I've pre-cut one, so you don't have to watch me cut that out. So I magically have two, yay. <laughs> All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring in my sprig punch here and I've got a piece of vellum, unless it's escaped me, which sometimes happens. Ah, so I've got a scrap piece of vellum right here and I'm gonna go ahead and punch one of those sprigs right out. Now I like to use my punches upside down for things like this. So our punches come flat and there's a little lock. Let's see if I can get that to lock so you can see it. So it stores nice and flat and it's got the picture on the front so you can see it really well. And then you unlock it and then you can use it to punch. So you slide your paper in the front. It looks like you should slide it in here, but that is not the way it goes. So you can slide it in the side or the front. And then because I've got it upside down, I'm gonna slightly squeeze and I can see exactly where I'm punching. This is more important when you're dealing with a stamped image than it is on a plain paper, but concept is the same. All right, so now we've got our beautiful sprig there. Okay, so I'm going to start off and I'm going to go ahead and put this sprig down first. And I think I'm going to have it hanging off the edge a little bit. So I brought in my stamp and seal and I'm going to put just a smidge of a stamp and seal there and place that right there. All right, so then next I'm going to take some dimensionals and put it on the back of this flower here. And you can add one, two, three, as many as you want. I'm gonna put two. I like when it's a larger image to put at least two so that it uh, gives me some stability there. And I'm gonna go this way with my flower and I think I'm gonna have it hang off the edge just a bit. I think it's more fun when it hangs off the edge. All right, so this second flower I'm gonna layer over the top, but I want this to be up a little bit higher. So where I'm gonna overlap this flower, I'm gonna put one dimensional dot. I think I'm gonna turn this as well. 
Yep, maybe like that. So I'll put one dimensional dot where it's gonna overlap, and then I'm gonna put two on the other side where it's not overlapping. That way my heights are the same. I hope that makes sense. So one on the side that's gonna be overlapping, and then let's double stack. So I'm, don't forget to take off that backing paper, otherwise they just fall apart. Put that second one on there, and let's go ahead and get this down, and hopefully I didn't mess that up. Again, I'm gonna kinda go off the edge up there. All right, so when you're building a collage, you can create all your little bits first if you'd like to and kind of lay them out and you get them exactly where you want them and then you're like, uh-oh, how do I glue all of this down? So if you'll take a quick photo with your smartphone, um, then you now have, or a camera, it can be a camera, it doesn't matter if it's a phone, but take a photo of it, then when you remove all the pieces and you start to build them back, you've got a picture of what it looked like. So then you don't have to start from scratch. All right, the next thing I'm gonna do is I am gonna go ahead and stamp and emboss my sentiment. So I've got a piece of flirty flamingo right here, and I'm gonna stamp this with my Versamark. Now this is my yucky Versamark. I have some that look pretty bad and some that look pretty clean still, but they work the same, it's all good. So yeah, that's a yucky one. <laughs> All right, and then we're gonna emboss this in white. So I put my powder in a plastic container because I find it much easier to use. They come in little jars like this and you could pour it back in the jar if you prefer, but I'm a little lazy on that and I find this works better for me. So I'm just gonna scoop up a little powder, shake away the excess so it's only gonna stick to where I have stamped my image. And then I'm gonna bring in my heat tool now I have an old, old heat tool. To me, this just speaks to the awesome quality of the Stampin' Up! products. I've even dropped it once, so it's cracked. But mine doesn't cover the tip. It only has one speed. I've had it for like 25 years. It's crazy. So I'm gonna go ahead and melt this. And mine is a little bit loud. Again, it's an old one. But I hope that you'll be able to see the magic of the embossing. Um, I call it melting, but it... it basically turns to a, to the raised image. So let's watch this. I hope you guys can see how cool this is. I don't know why I still get such a joy out of watching this. So as it heats up, it's gonna go ahead and start to change that from powder form to a solid form. See, I hope you can see that, how cool that is. So I'm just gonna slowly move it until the full image is done. Cool, isn't that neat? So now it's all shiny. I love that, love it still. Do you guys love embossing? It's my favorite. Okay, next we're gonna go ahead and die cut this as well. So I'm gonna pull in the second smallest of this rectangle to cut out my sentiment here. So we'll go ahead and run this through our die cutting machine. And so we've got this label right here. All right. So I wanna add in um, some of my linen thread. So I'm using about 14 inches, and then I'm gonna have another about five inch or so piece to tie the knot. So I'm gonna cut that off. I'm not measuring it, it doesn't matter. Use a little bit more. I like to use it right off the spool, it's easier. So I'm just putting four fingers together, and I'm gonna wrap this around. So I'm, I'm starting here, one, two, three, and four. Well, there we go. And then I will go ahead and cut that tail off. Now you might use more or less ribbon depending on if your fingers are bigger or smaller than mine and if you put any space in them. I'm gonna twist this once just because it makes it easier to hold on to. And then I'm gonna tie this little piece around the center. Some days this works really easily for me and other days it does not. It depends on if my arthritis is acting up and today my arthritis is acting up a little bit. So while well, this is gonna look a little awkward as I try to tie that. Okay, hopefully that worked. Perfect. So I'm just gonna tie and one more time, tie a knot, just to make sure I'm nice and secure. Again, my fingers aren't really working today, but that's okay. All right, now you could cut that down short. Um, I'm not gonna worry about it. I think the extra sticking out looks kinda nice. So it looks like I tied a bow instead of just a little loop. Okay, and then I'm going to adhere this right to the back of my tag here. So let's go ahead and put some stamp and seal on that and place that so I see what I want to see. So I think this just adds a nice little touch and then we're ready to go ahead and adhere this right down on our card base here. Now, I want this to sit 
flat. So what I want it to do is I'm gonna have to pop it up on this one, right, to get it the same level as this, and then I'm gonna have to step double stack over here. Now, if you want it popped up even more, then you can double stack here and triple stack here. Let's do that so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, so let me grab my dimensionals. So I'm gonna put two, whoops, gotta remember to take the backing paper off. Let's put two on the end that's going to be on this flower here. And then let's put a three stack on the opposite side. So this may be more dimension than what you like to do when you're mailing your cards. I like lots of dimension, lots of layers, lots of height, lots of texture. So I tend to go a little bit crazy with my dimensional dots. I go through thousands and thousands of these a year. Uh, let's go, I kind of like that. So let's see, did I forget to take the backing paper off? I did, I forgot to take the backing paper off the last one, it wasn't sticking. All right, so I'm gonna let you see this from the side so you can see all the height there. Maybe you can see it this way. So you can see that one's got the triple, that's got the double. But let me flip it over so you can see here. So you've got my one flower has popped up once. This one's got the two because of the overlap. And then I got two here and three here under that label. I hope that makes sense for you guys. All right, awesome. Now we're ready to put this on our card front. And you could put it flat, but here again, I'm gonna do some dimensional dots. So I'm going a little bit crazy. Whoever gets this in the mail is gonna have a very padded envelope with all of these layers. It mails fine, I think. Sometimes I'll slide a little piece of paper down in a card when I've got some crazy embellishments going on, just to kind of protect it. Make sure I'm not upside down. That's always a good thing. All right, so let's add the finishing touch and I am gonna pull out one of my absolute favorite um, embellishments in our catalog, and that is the Elegant Faceted Gems. These are just so much fun. I love that there's a white and a clear, and then of course the pink is nice as well, but I tend to use, as you can see, the white and clear first. So um, this has actually got like a glitter to it. So I used the clear ones on my last card, but let's go ahead and use these glittery ones. Oh, I know better than to use the pointy end. It works so much better if you use the putty end to slide these off of this, uh, these slick sheets here. So I'm just gonna place a few on here. Uh, I think I'll go with another big one right down there. So just add it a little bit. It has a nice little touch to it, I think. Cute, right? So let me bring in the original one. So my linen thread was a little chunkier. Um, I'm finding that the different spools have different thicknesses to them depending on, um, I guess, depending on the manufacturer. I don't know. So this one's got lots going on with the, the linen thread where this has a very nice soft touch to it. So, But I think they're both really fun. And you can see the difference between the clear or the sparkle embellishments. So I hope you guys love this. Yay. Yeah, joy. it is magical. Yes, Jean, I agree. Definitely agree. Hey, Belinda, glad you could join me today. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Again, I'll update the video description so that it's got all your dimensions and all your uh, supply lists so you've got those. And don't forget when you purchase the Gorgeous Posies Project Kit and the Coordinating Stamp Set, Gorgeous Posies Stamp Set, I will send you the make and take packets for the four bonus cards. And again, that expires Friday is the last day to take advantage of that offer. So I hope that you guys love this. Share the video with your crafty friends. And I can't wait to see you again next Tuesday. I've got a fun surprise for you. We're going to do a technique card next week. Thanks so much and have a great week. Bye-bye.